And so, <clears throat> um, you know, what I'm going to focus on is mobile marketing. And there's lots of different channels. You know, you've got um, text and QR codes and, um, you know, couponing. And, you know, when you get into couponing, uh, you know, there's sort of like, all right, bridges uh, with advertising. And, you know, if you do some location examples, so all these kind of touch one another. Um, but what I'm going to talk about mainly is how we're getting beyond the, the ad. So lots of people, they create their, their mobile app, and they do some mobile advertising to get, you know, 100,000 people to download that app. And then, it, and then it's like they're waiting, and it's like, okay, I've done mobile, but, but now what? You know, what's that? What's the next action that's going to get me a deeper engagement or a deeper relationship, um, you know, with my consumer? <clears throat> so let's dive in. Uh, this is an infographic that we created to, again, just think. It's a framework to think about what you want to accomplish. And so, you know, the early days of mobile were really focused on, um, you know, messaging. And we had the emergence of the mobile web. But every time you go to one of these more rich um, channels, it's on fewer and fewer handsets. So think of this as, like, the foundation um, and sort of, like, a, you know, the width as market, market penetration, right? So mobile web, a little, you know, fewer people have used an app. And then you get into smaller things like um, QR codes. Um, the great thing is that there's lots of experimentation happening, right? And so I think as marketers or business owners or people who are in char charge of a mobile strategy, you really need to think about whether you're after something sexy that a few people can do. Um, and maybe you get a great press release out of it and scare some competition. Or if you want uh, results by hitting the largest um, universe of, of, of people possible, right? And so there are those trade-offs that you need to think about. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about what's working. So on that foundational layer of, um, uh, you know, mainly messaging and, and QR codes, you know, uh, activating sponsorship or activating media, right? So the, the, um, what happened, in, you know, way back with American Idol is they said, we're going to get people to participate. And so that brought TV you know, to life um, with people participating on the couch and sort of the lean forward active participation as opposed to, um, you know, the one-way broadcast becoming the two-way conversation. Um, and now that's even, I mean, there are some really, really cool apps that you can open and sort of watch, especially with game shows, on your tablet and play along with the contestants um, on the TV. And so we're seeing more and more of that. <clears throat> and so this is something that I think this is a great framework for thinking about how you're building your mobile database, right? So it's beyond just getting numbers. It's getting intimate engagements. And so this is a, um, a graph that we put together, we talk about with our clients. So in the beginning stages, think of like dating, right? In the beginning stages, the chance of somebody opting out of your program are considerably higher with every communication that you, se that you send. And so you're kind of on trial. So we say consumers are easily spooked. You got to be really careful. Everything's got to be right. But the point here is that you start to create value in that relationship. And as you earn that trust, you know, um, you know, after time and exposure, you've basically earned the right to screw up once in a while here and have a lower opt-out rate than if you screwed up in the beginning. And so we call that the loyalty curve uh, framework. It's really important to think about. We've spent years sort of building mobile databases for big brands and retailers. And it's amazing when you give somebody tools, because we have a software as a service platform, and when you give somebody a tool, man, they want to hit that button. You know, they want to hit send to that audience because they want results. And so, you know, people will, will do that too often without thinking through the ramifications of what's appropriate. <clears throat> so I talked a little bit about time, location, uh, and interaction. Mobile's really unique in that when you have the combination of these three aspects, that's what make, makes mobile unique. And I often say, if something's better sent uh, via email, uh, if it doesn't involve like time, location, and interaction, then it may be better sent by email. Mobile should be reserved for what's really, really important. Uh, and that's a discipline that's hard for marketers and most marketers to, um, to teach themselves, to, you know, to, to hold back. 